Welcome back to DXB Today, where we are taking a little bit of a psychological deep dive into the athletic mindset. Is there a common theme, uh, regardless of which sport you excel in, regardless of which sport you practice? Uh, what does set an athlete and an elite athlete apart from uh, well, us mere mortals? Well, let's find out with our next guest, the renowned Paralympian and disability inclusion consultant, dedicating her entire life to promoting diversity, accessibility and inclusivity globally through her platform, inspiring individuals through her initiatives and extensive knowledge. Please welcome Jessica Smith, OAMPLY, to the show yet again. Great to have you back with us. Thank you so much for having me. Um, we can't start this conversation with well, addressing the conversation we've just left hanging. So, and what a privilege, I must say, to have uh, somebody who's won the ICC T20 World Cup alongside us here, somebody who's been uh, at the Paralympics uh, here in a year where we've got the T20 World Cup and an Olympics and Paralympics going on. You couldn't ask for better guests <laughs> great, in a year right? like this. But do you, was anything you'd like to add with regards to Olympic villages and activities? No, well, I think you said it perfectly. What happens in the village stays in the village. <laughs> it's a very uh, high, intense environment and you have incredible athletes with, as we've just been discussing, incredible mindsets and it's an opportunity to enjoy, perform and release at the same time. To that, and just to wrap up on, on, on that latest news that Maitha brought us though as well, would that be a good idea to have a sort of it's not so much a safe space, but a quiet space as well. You know, I really think so. It wasn't something that was an option for when I was competing. I don't think mental health was explored a lot for athletes when I was at the height of my career. So I think what we've seen now is that an opportunity for athletes to at least have something that can take their mind away from the high pressure intensity of performing and competing, especially when you're in an environment that is, you know, the Olympics and the Paralympics are very different from the comp competitions that we're used to, you know, um, you're seeing your own idols and these incredible <laughs> athletes that you wouldn't normally see yourself. And so how do you process all of that? So I think having the option for that safe, quiet zone to, to just focus on mental health would be really important. So our I had a question as related to sport, but still related to us as a sport. Yeah. And today, as after being an athlete, and today you're a mum as well, um, how do you think that has uh, kind of channeled itself into being a mum? Because because it's it, it's not easy. No, and I think that's a really good question. I think from everything that I've learned as my time as an athlete, it's about being able to draw the parallels from that and apply mm. to everything that I do today, and that includes motherhood. You know, yeah. so how do I? be the best role model for my children through my actions and through my words. And obviously sport is a beautiful platform to do that. And even though I'm not competing now, I'm very active and I try to be very fit. And I think that that's, uh, you know, some really good skill sets that I can instill in my children. And that's encompassed in everything that we've said today from nutrition to wellness. And, you know, for me, it's what can I do that shows them the importance of goal setting and being resilient and determined. And, you know, that's a huge privilege and a huge honor for me now as a parent yeah. and did that like was that challenging keeping track of your trainings and stuff as well as being a mother and you know a supporter for the family yeah definitely so although you know I'm not competing at the high level now I'm still very much involved in sport and and marathon running which is very different to swimming so it's a huge juggle but I think if you can take your children along with you for that journey it makes it so much easier and then you are instilling so many wonderful messages for them as well so it's it's what I do now as a family unit I guess yeah and do you have of that kind of regimented way with your children? How are you like at sports days and stuff like that? Are you, <laughs> it's, one day, <laughs> it's really hard. My daughter just had a swimming competition this week and the anxiety I had first <laughs> from just the chlorine and all the trauma that it triggers for me yeah. sitting in the, the stadium, but also not wanting to project some of my own regimented, very black and white thinking onto her. So being, you know, just optimistic. She's only eight years old. So wanting to really allow her to enjoy movement and enjoy what her body is able to do for her. But I can guarantee that that voice inside my head is, is always going to be a critique. But so for me, that's a big learning moment of not being able to necessarily verbalize all of that know that that is an internal process for me so supporting her the best way i can and was that part of your process because you write children's books as well right yes so was that part of the process and the, the reason 
for writing the books? Yeah, I think there was a huge part of that, of wanting to sort of convey a very profound message that, you know, we talk about as elite sports people or very successful business people. And how do you articulate that in a way that's fun for children, gets them excited about different things? So one of the books is about my first swimming event. And so that was a catalyst for this conversation of, you know, how can I share this really important message about trying your hardest and working hard and showing up to young children and that was what you know the children's books are all about. Do, do you often talk about uh, results to your kids or do you often do you find yourself speaking more about the processes uh, to your kids? Definitely more about the process Processes, yeah. yeah and I think that that's sort of something that is is can be really difficult for elite athletes to help their children to understand the mm. process and the journey and to focus yeah. on that rather than the winning and 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 losing yeah, because but that's also a very important conversation too. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm so fascinated with everyone's personal stories. We haven't actually addressed the story that the question that we set out on at the beginning of this uh, <laughs> we show. And I think we've got a lot of evidence, but just to wrap things up if we can Jess in terms of that. And we've heard from cricketers, we've heard from swimmers, we've heard from footballers as well. Is there a common theme when it comes to athletic mindset? I think definitely. I think that it's all about being able to continually show up and perform under high pressure. So regardless of what the sport is, you have to have that mindset. And I know you touched on it sort of in the introduction. Is it something that we're born with or is it something that we learn? I think it's a bit of both. You know, I, I consider myself a complete introvert, but when it comes to getting up behind the blocks, I turn into a completely different person and that mm. voice inside is like, it's, it's go time, you're winning, yeah. um, and nothing else sort of matters. So I think that that is something that you have to have when you're performing yeah. at that elite level. Robbie concur? Yeah, 100%. You have no choice, and that's the only way to go about it. If you want to be a successful athlete and you want to be a successful human being, you have to have that resilience, you have to have that mentality where you say, okay, it's go time now, switch on, put your best foot forward, focus on the process, the results will always take care of itself. So if we'd done that at the beginning of the show, we could have saved ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I have an unrelated question though. Yes. Uh, what's the biggest advantage? About having one arm? Well, you know what? It's <laughs> half price manicures. <laughs> so, but it is, right? You have to see the humor in all of it, but absolutely. I, I like being different. I like being able to, sh to show that my disability has been something that has helped me to achieve. It's not yeah. in spite of living yeah. with disability. I would, I, would, I would even go on to say, I don't think it's a disability. I think you're just differently able. Yeah. And, and you know, think about what's the, what's the other word? Because it's not a disability. It's, it's, I think it's more, a, it's, 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 more, it's, it's more a different ability. Well, yeah, exactly. And here, you know, people of determination, it's about trying to put, you know, a, a different perspective around what can people do rather sure. than always assuming that people can't. I love this conversation we're having. It's never ending and I wish we can have more but thank you Jessica for coming with us today and Good. can't wait to have you again next time. Thank you so much. But I think Lane it's now time for you and the XP in It is indeed you see this is exactly we've got so entrenched in the conversation <laughs> it goes so quick right but we have uh, 60 seconds left where we're going to put you on the spot. Go for it. And ask you as many questions <laughs> as possible in that time uh, <clears throat> about yourself so we can count down three two one now Robbie if you weren't a cricketer, what would you be doing? Oh, playing some other sport, perhaps tennis. Nice. Tennis? Mm. Why tennis? If I'd known paddle existed, definitely paddle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nuts about paddle. <laughs> Your first job? My first job? Uh, I, I worked for Air India, uh, but, but cricket, was, cricket was more the job. So playing cricket for them was the job. Nice. Your motto in life and work? Uh, I, I once had a question saying, okay, what would my epitaph read? I would say, yeah, I would say we would read, lover of all, served everyone. Yeah, I like that. Uh, your go-to place in Dubai so far that you've uh, liked? Oh, go-to place or home? No. I just love my home. The most memorable match of your career? Oof, Oof that's, a, that's, a big <laughs> that's a rough one, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to say the, the 2007 World Cup final oh, against Pakistan. Big up. Uh, a top tip for future inspiring cricketers or sportsmen? Oh, I'd say uh, what we were just speaking about. I'd say the result will always take care of itself if you look after the process. The process is a byproduct. Oh, sorry, the result is a byproduct of the process. Nice, brilliant. And one last question. We ask all of our guests, why Dubai? Oh, man, why not? Is what I would say. Because uh, the the opportunities it 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 comes with, <clears throat> and I think Dubai is a very different place when you come here as a as a tourist versus when you come here as a traveler. When you come here as a traveler, you actually get to experience the culture that it has to provide, the opportunities that it has to provide. And I think 
what we've discovered here as travelers, and we've come here because of the IPL from 2020, we came here pretty often. We came 2020, 2021, and we had friends who moved here uh, during COVID. So we visited them as travelers, and then we learned so much about the city that it has so much more to offer than just the tourist traps. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as what is available for kids, it's incredible. Today, my, my son goes to a school where there are 24 kids in this class and then 19 nationalities. Talk about making the world a smaller place. He, he gets it in his classroom every day. I can go on and on about this, guys. Nice, this one. We've got another show sorted, all right? <laughs> yeah, back for another show. Or why Dubai, all right? Let's do it. 60 minutes. Uh, bless you guys. I've loved this show. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure sharing the sofa with you. Robbie, thank you so thank much you indeed. So much. Uh, enjoy thank your you. Dubai journey. And Jessica, of course, uh, enjoy. And all the great work you're doing with the platform here as well. So thank, thank you so much. much indeed. Right. Uh, we're not going anywhere at the moment. We've got a live performance to look forward to in just a few moments. Time to stay with us here.